But when God is going to do that, you should begin to ask the question. When God wants to singular for a blessing, what should be my response? I told you God is more the God of opportunities than God of blessing. It is true that God gives us more opportunities than blessings. When he singled out the widow for a blessing, it was actually an opportunity because a, 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 a preacher, a prophet came and asked for water. And she said, I can deal with that until he asked for cake. What would have been your reaction? I want to ask you if she did not react properly. Would the, will the singling out for a blessing, would we be reading about it now? You know, you have blown some opportunities. That's why you need a pastor like me. God gives more of opportunities than dash, dashing you things. She converted the opportunity so much so she enjoyed balanced eating when others were dying of famine. As a matter of fact, people ate their children in the days of famine. They ate their children from a point of hunger. She was feasting because when she was being singular for a blessing, she knew how to respond to that. When you are singular for a blessing, you may have to sow what you were counting on. She was counting on the little flour and oil for her last meal. She was going to stretch it for as long as possible. But God knew that she was just going to die. And so God took a bit of that and multiplied it and continued to supply her. In the day you, you, you are appointed for a blessing, you have to be ready to respond the way God expects you to respond. And that's where teaching becomes very important so that you recognize God when he shows up and you recognize the best response you need to have. It is true that some preachers have abused the generosity of people. But God still has not changed his mind. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. If God wants to give you a harvest, he will give you an opportunity to sow a seed. And many of us have withheld the seed and we're wondering where is my harvest. Some of us have eaten the seed and now we're hungry. He gives seed to the sower so that the sower will have bread for food. Are you with me? I remember when I was preaching, it was an anointing service. The change of our times and our seasons. And I said, some people are here. Times have been so hard. The season has not changed. Maybe you're still in the season of your parents that struggled and you are still struggling. Another generation still born in captivity. And I said, I perceive that you need to sow a seed. That day, I sowed a seed. But I don't think a lot of people responded. You see, we edit the sermon. Online editing, real-time editing. As soon as the pastor says something, you don't want to do, edit. But it is on record. The woman did the right thing. Her child benefited. Do you know if you don't do the right thing, not only you will suffer, your children will suffer, your ch grandchildren will suffer. The Bible says we are of those who cut covenant with God by sacrifice. A covenant is for generations. Her son profited from it. And he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. In the day that God singles you out for a blessing, the other thing you need to know, and I'm going to get to the point of prayer in a short while, is that you need to put God's agenda first, even above your children. Hmm. God comes calling through the man of God. He says, give me water. I said, give me a cake. I said, give me my own first before your own. You see, generally, women put their children first, even above their husband. And that's fine because a husband who is a real man 
would come last. What am I eating when my children have not eaten? No problem. But when God comes calling, never put anybody above God. God is the first, has always been the first, will always be the first. That's why Elijah said, no, give me my own first. Because I am coming in representation of God. And there are many women here, even if God showed up in your house, you will, you will say, no, my children first. See, who gave you the child? Who will keep the child? It is one thing to have a child. It's another thing to ever have grandchildren. You know, you can short circuit the product productivity. If God gives you something and you keep God out of it, your children, supposing they are barren, what happens? The generation stops there. So when God comes calling, in the day you're singular from a blessing, don't exalt even your children above God. The woman struggled for a second and I'm glad she did not succumb to the idol worship. Anything you put in the place of God is an idol. And God dismantles idols. He smashes idols. So when he said, bring me my own first, it's like the tithe. Don't remove your rent. Don't remove your children's school fees. Put God first. And God will make sure, not only will your children get an education, because an education is not equal to success. They will have an education, they will succeed, and they will take them to significance. Amen. Hallelujah. When God comes calling in the day that you're singular for a blessing, you need to listen to godly counsel. Naaman was used to giving orders. He was a general. He speaks and everything moves. He got home one day. His house girl was the one that told his wife, if only my master would go to Israel, there's a prophet that will heal him. When God comes calling in the day, you are singular for a blessing. No matter how high up you have been in your family, on your job, when you come to church, you are not an Obwefi. You are not even a president when you come to church. You are just a child of God. When God comes calling, you have to listen to godly counsel from a sanctified source. The one that is planted around you. You know, it surprises me that people run from pillar to post looking for the word of God. God knows where you live. And God knows where he planted you. This girl was in his house. The widow, listen, Elijah came to the widow. If God is going to speak to you, stop running from mountain to mountain. God will send the word where he planted you. That's why the Bible says those that are planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of their God. All this running around is idol worship. And the Bible says you will not worship on this mountain anymore. It's not a day of mountain, it's a day of spirit. You will listen to godly counsel. The girl said, in specific terms, go to Israel, to the man of God. I, want you, I don't want you to miss this one. When he was going, he went to the king of Syria. He said, I want to go. And the king wrote a letter to the king of Israel and wrote to the king of Israel, I am sending my servant Naaman to you. I want you to heal him. You see, rich people always think it is another rich person that can solve the problem. A king wrote to another king. Even though the man told the king what a girl said. Can I tell you, I said in the day that God God singles you for blessing. You will listen to godly counsel, not rich man's counsel. Because when he took the letter to the king of Israel, the king of Israel tore his clothes and said, Ah, 
I may be a king, but I cannot heal. I may have money, but I don't have salvation. And the man didn't know what to do until they said, no, it shouldn't have written to you, king. It is Elijah he should send the man to. Many of us run to the wrong people. I have respect for the big man in your family. I have respect for the president. God ordained the authorities. But can I tell you something? The power is in the altar. We are the ones that can raise the dead. We are the ones that the oracle of God. And when we say what God says, even the king has to respect it. Because it's by the word that even the king will reign. It was, a, it was a word that came. And the word came to pass beautifully. In the day that you're singled out for a blessing, listen to me, saint of God. You would have to drop your pride. You know, there are, people think it's only rich people that are proud. I have met poor people that are proud. Naaman went to the king and the king wrote to another king. Ah, there are some things the king cannot solve. The king will still come to church to the man of God. That's why a man of God should not be running to the palace. There are some things the palace will come to you. Because the power to solve that problem is not resident in the palace. It is in the altar. You will have to drop your pride. Naaman finally got to Elisha. And you know what happened? Elisha didn't come out to see him. Elisha spoke from his room. Tell Naaman to go to Jordan and go and wash seven times. Naaman was not used to people not shaking and entertaining him and rolling out the red carpet. But you see, when you come to a man that knows his office, as much as he respects your own office, he does not shake. Elisha didn't come out and say, just tell him. And he said, what? You mean this fellow will not come out to see me? You don't know who I am? Do you not know how long I've come? And the man felt it doesn't matter. And maybe it wasn't arrogance. Maybe it was humility. Because Elisha wanted God to be glorified. If I came out, lay hands on you, you would think it's me. I only spoke the word. I've never even seen you. Sometimes you misunderstand us. What you time as arrogance may actually be humility. The man said, never. He said, are there not better swimming pools in my house? I have a jacuzzi. In my hotel, there's a whirlpool. And all kinds of things. How can I? Naaman bath. But a leper is blowing guy. Can I tell you? I love you very much. But when you come to church, please don't blow guy. Because the truth is, everybody is dealing with something. And whatever you're dealing with, may it not deal with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my job is to fight alongside with you so that whatever wants to mangle your life can be dealt with to the glory of God. The man said, I'm not going. I'm going back to Syria. And the boy started begging him, Oga, no do. You see, when people are begging you, no do, no do. O fair tenny. You will just die a leper. You see, today, if you have Ebola, I'm sure they will not let your body to be buried in... What's that place? No, that fancy... Vaults and gardens. If you die of Ebola, I'm sure vaults and gardens will find a way to say the place is full. Some dead body said will move. May God help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. You would have to drop your pride. He said, oh God, don't do. Yeah, what did he tell you to do? It's a small thing, just bath. Then he slowed down. And I hope you're slowing down. To reconsider what I'm saying. The Bible says, when he dipped in the waters. He didn't dip on one time. Because the specific instruction is seven times. The boy wrote the exam seven times. Elijah sent his servant, go and check seven times. 
And many of us, we do two. And we say, it's enough. I can't deal with this anymore. Then you change church. When you get to another church, you will start from count zero again. And the seventh time, Bible says he came out and his skin was as smooth as a baby's skin. In the day that God singles you out for a blessing, you need to drop your pride and obey simple instructions. Jonah chapter 2 verse 8 says, those who regard worthless idols, they forsake their own mercy. I want you to put it up. Jonah 2 verse 8 says, those who regard worthless idols, they only forsake their own mercy. What is an idol? Pride is an idol. Disobedience is an idol. Nobody can instruct you. You will do your own thing, your own time, your own way. Those who regard, those who claim to worthless, the word worthless is, okay, you have been doing it, what has it produced in your life? Naaman, you've been swimming in your swimming pools, what has it brought you? You have a jacuzzi, you're still a leper. And guess what? If you're a leper, you have a swimming pool, you will swim in it alone. Those that regard worthless, I want you to consider worthless idols. Idols are exalted things, but they cannot produce the results. They forsake their own mercy. May this not be who we are in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want you to stand. I want to pray. Or maybe I should say, everybody sit down. If you want to be singled out divinely for a blessing, stand to your feet. I want all movement stopped because the power of the Holy Spirit is what powers the word will begin to move. Particularly for those who are struggling like the widow. I want all heads bowed. You may lift up your hand. You may kneel down. But listen, it is time to pray. For those who are struggling like the widow. In fact, you, it looks like it's terminal. There's no way out. I've run out of options. God will single you out. It doesn't matter how many people are in the same situation with you. God is going to descend from the heavens and lift you out of that situation in the name of the Lord Jesus. The same way he brought the widow of Zarephath out of the midst of widows. Many died in that situation. You will not die. You will live to declare the glory of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want to pray for those who are doing okay but there is still a painful, shameful, disgraceful part of life. It may be marriage that lacks joy. There's no romance anymore. What should be enjoyment is now endurance. It may be a child that is in school, expensive school, but not doing well. I want to pray. Can you lift your hand to God? Do not consider worthless idols of arrogance. Oh, or, or thinking somebody is looking at you. Because listen, everybody is dealing with something. May the Lord God whom I serve, the God of the Bible, Jehovah is his name. Single each and every one out of the grouping of those struggling. Those dealing with the reproach. And single you out for a blessing. A blessing that will cross the problem change your situation erase the reproach and set you on the path of greatness see, for generations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says there were many widows maybe you are thinking this group is so large in church must you remain in that group Listen, at times like this, the Bible says the word does not profit some people because they're so busy examining and cross-examining the preacher. I want you, if there is a situation that tends to seem to nullify the blessing in your life, 
I want you to raise your voice to God and say, this is my word for my children, for my generations. Lord, single me out for a blessing. Change my life. Change my situation. Change my experience. You have done it before. Lord, I will not consider the idols of argument. I will not consider the fact that I'm able to hide it. Lord, I want you to remove it. I want it to disappear. Lord, single me out for a blessing. Have mercy upon my life. If you are struggling with your education, this word is for you. If you're struggling with your marriage, if you're struggling with your children, if you're struggling with your health, God can single you out and deliver you for something that there's no record that has been done before. His God is able to do a new thing. If you're struggling with your business, it's not about where I get the next loan or where I can borrow some money from. If you're struggling with school fees, God can single you out for a blessing. It's not about patching it any longer. Listen, it's as long as you keep patching the tire, you're going to have a blowout sooner than later. Lord, I need you to overhaul my life. I need you to change everything about me. Let it be for the glory of your name. If you're here, you have accepted your situation. You have said it will always be like that. God is saying it does not have to be like that. It's not too late. If you came to church today saying, I know it's too late, but I'm still going to manage to serve God. God is saying it is never too late for Jehovah. He will do a new thing. A new season. A new life. He will renew your marriage. He will give you greater options. Because he loves you. Because he saved you. Because you bear his name. It means nothing to him. It's something he wants to do. That is his nature. Thank you Lord. I give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Maybe there are two people here. You're totally giving up before today. Why didn't you come and let me pray with you? You gave up. Why didn't you come? You will still come to church, but you had given up. You are just going to manage the situation. You've seen the end of the road. You can't see any further. I want to pray with you. God is not the God of the dead. He says he's God of the living. Even if it is dead, God can raise it up for his own glory. Father, I pray because I feel the anguish. I feel the weight and the pain at this altar. I feel crushing hopelessness. But because they have come to Jehovah, to the altar of the living God. But you prepared a word for them. Like the widow said, it's over. I'm going to die. But the man of God came and brought life. I speak life to every hopeless situation they have brought to this altar. 
I speak the power of God into the very thing in their hearts that is causing something to die. The Lord, resurrection power, let it hit home into the situation of these ones. Let us hear testimonies of how God did it from this altar. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Single this one out. Let it be said that when people enter this situation, they never come out of it. Except for this one. Make an exception in their situation. Lord, I ask that you do a quick job. Because some may be thinking of ending their lives. Some may be thinking of just drifting into oblivion. Save these souls. Save the situation. Glorify your name. Thank you, Father Lord. I want you to stretch forth your hands towards this ones and join faith with me. If only you could feel what I can feel. If only you can feel the weight. If you only you can feel the pain, you would pray like, you're, like you lost your mind. Lord help send hell from Zion send angels with speed oh God change what seems unchangeable do what seems impossible Glorify Jesus, the Son of God. Holy Spirit, move and glorify the Father. Thank you for the testimonies that coming out of the mess, we will give you all the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. I hear God saying, Just the same way the sister came said, I checked for the problem and the problem had gone. Maybe it's home. When you get home, you will meet the opposite of what you left. Maybe it's somebody that behaves badly. God would have changed the person's mind. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name mighty name. Amen. God bless you. All right. Somebody came to church this morning. I heard the Lord saying, you came to check. What do they do there? Is this God a lie? You have heard the testimonies. You can feel the power. It's now time for you to come and give your life to Christ. Because you know that as well as you can see me standing here, that what I'm saying is true. Who is that person you came to see? You were not convinced. But you have seen a lot. You have heard a lot. And God is saying, what more do you want? Come forward and give God the glory and just give your life to Christ and heaven will celebrate you. I see you shuffling on the spot but I don't want to go out but God wants you to come out and he has the bridge between where you are the one that will take you to your destiny is ready for you. Come wherever you are. It's the best thing you ever do. It's the best thing you're ever going to do. I have a feeling the person is right here in this segment. I pray that you will not miss this opportunity. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe there's still one more person there. I want to pray for you today. I want you to say, Father, forgive me. I want you to say, Father, forgive me. 
I want, I want to be your son. I will no longer do it my own way. I submit to you. Change my life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Make me a testimony. I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. What is, sorry, what's your name? Tywon. Come closer. Lift up your hands to God. Father, thank you for Tywon. I give you praise for his life. I say the struggle that wants to possess his soul be broken. And make this one to become an evangelist. But the reason of your power that he will experience to speak to those who are like him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Right, Tyrell. You did the right thing. Evangel Zesta, I hear God saying, I will do wonders in his life. That when he testifies, people will rush to Christ. I want you to pray for him and talk to him. I hear God say a lot of things here that I should not say. You will surprise, be surprised what I know about you. But it changes nothing because God has started with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to go back to your Maybe take him somewhere. Can you help me celebrate the Lord? Come on, celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. You are not glad for God. And you want God to be glad for you. Heaven rejoices when souls are saved. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. One day very soon, he will tell you his real testimony. And guess what I will say that day? I'm not surprised. And the testimony will shock you. But I wait for that day. Now let me take tithes and first fruit. If you're in church with a tithe.